Okay, who is the oldest person who ever lived? Ah, many just answered Methuselah, who certainly did live like 969 years. But if that was your answer, you were nowhere close. Sorry, but his father Enoch, the seventh from Adam, the good prophet Enoch, not the evil one from Cain, lived until 365 on earth and was then taken, but he did not die, even according to the New Testament. He's still alive today. Imagine trying to explain that to the game shows like Jeopardy, for instance. Welcome to Answers in Jubilees, produced by The God Culture. This is a topic we have always wanted to cover. Many seminaries and scholars read Genesis and assume when Yahuwah said he would limit man's days to 120 years, well, that would have to mean that there was only 120 years from then until the flood. And some are adamant about it. They will argue and argue and argue. Well, without the book of Jubilees, this topic might still be up for debate, but no longer because Jubilees settles this once and for all today. I'm excited to share this with you. Here we go. Let's start with Genesis 6, 3. And Yahuwah said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Now, just a quick read of this alone uh, it really causes one to question a couple of things here. If Yahuwah's spirit will not strive with man beyond 120 years, and the flood happened, if so, because that's the way they're trying to say you read this, the flood happened in 120 years, then does that mean his spirit left mankind at the flood? Well, that fits no scripture whatsoever, does it? The second question, if one thinks this through, is if Yahuwah is defining man by his flesh, and that's what he says here, how could this not be a reference to man's flesh only living 120 years? It seems like it's a fleshly reference, right? I mean, man did not perish in the flood. Certainly many did, although there's a lot of debate as to whether they were actually men. He continued with Noah, though, and his family, so man continued. Was Noah not flesh? Of course he was. It leaves one rather perplexed that scholars don't seem to really think these things through sometimes and even ask themselves these kinds of questions before positing new theories and even ideas. It's not dangerous to posit an idea. There's nothing wrong with that. But you should support it, and then you should go back and vet it, and then vet it again, and then vet it again. Well, what do we witness today? And in history, for starters, and then we will deal with jubilees at the end, which will settle this whole thing. Fast forward, and then we'll go back. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, who keeps track of such things, the oldest person in the world uh, confirmed in age now, not claims, but legitimately. So let's start with these people, uh, because, well, it seems like modern times seem to fit what the Bible seems to say there. Guinness says the oldest person who ever lived, well, that is because they do not believe the Bible, of course, but they weren't around back then, so let's cut them some slack. They weren't keeping track. They have modern records. So, French, uh, Jean Colmont, at the ripe old age of 122 years old, documented. Wow. Must have been the famous French fry diet. Joke long. Yeah, we know they aren't French. 
But just wait. There's a blog coming. TGC doesn't know that French fries aren't French. Ha ha ha. (laughs) Look for it. Well, that is two years beyond the limit. So does that one person mean mankind's years have not been limited then? I mean, one person exceeds it by two years, and that's it? It's shattered? Not sure where such scholars seem to abandon logic on such thinking. Uh, It's two years. Yahuwah must have either lied or meant something else, of course. Well, that's one way to look at that. (laughs) Since she's the only one we can prove that lived only two years beyond, well, That's still 120 years, and this has no impact on the rule. One person? Give me a break. All of mankind does not live anywhere near 120 years today. And I love her quote here, and this is also very telling. When asked on her 120th birthday what she expected from the future, she replied, I expect a short one. Indeed. But let's look at others. Living today, Kane Tanaka in Japan is the oldest person at 118 years old, just celebrated her birthday this month in fact. Maybe she'll also surpass the 120 year mark, but doubtful by much if so. Then there's the oldest man, and sorry guys, but the lady seemed to beat us in this category by far. The oldest man, uh, Jerome Kimura, lived until 116. He was also from Japan. And the oldest living man is 112 today, uh, Mr. Waiten from the UK, Bob Waiten. Uh, The oldest married couple, just so you know, is from Ecuador at 104, married to 110 years of age. Wow. So, in modern times, there sure appears to be a limit or a ceiling of about 120 years or less, doesn't there? What about the patriarchs, though? Well, they lived far beyond 120 years for a time. So, the rationale by some is that means the Bible would have to be wrong if it meant 120 lifespan only. Well, don't worry. Jubilees will answer that too, and the why, even. If only we read this all these years, no one would even enter such guess mode. Here's a very telling infographic that really demonstrates the shortening lifespans of mankind in a progressive format. You can see it right there on screen. What would cause this? Well, Jubilees will actually tell us that too. Sometimes some take every word or sentence from Scripture and they try to put it into a paradigm, which many times turns out to be false. It's the paradigm that is the problem not the Bible. Now, once they get you there, you almost have to agree with them if you've agreed to such paradigm, because you really can't view it any other way. But see, the Bible says what it says. This is a very obvious gradual decline, as evidence right there on screen, in lifespans, isn't it? All the way up until Noah, they lived 900 years or so, and all of a sudden, The flood happened. We see a decrease. Even as the flood neared Lamech, Noah's father, passed a good bit early, so he would miss the flood. Methuselah, however, lived right up until the flood occurred, almost within seven days, I believe. And that's because his name literally means, in Hebrew, his death shall bring. And so it did. You see, Enoch here, uh, it's misspelled as Enosh a second time, but it's Enoch uh, by mistake on the guy that created this infographic. This isn't ours. We're using someone else's. We credit that on screen. But that beard should still be growing as he didn't die. But look what happens after the flood. 
already a third shaved off of Shem's lifespan. Our fox head loses another third. By the days of Peleg, it's cut in half again. All the way down to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not still another 25% or so. It's just not, they're not living as long. And by Joseph, it's down to 110 years, and man is pretty much lowered to a limit below 120 years at that point, essentially. So, many look at all of this and still entrench themselves, but I believe, well, see, it's not about what we want to believe, it's about what Scripture says. Jubilees is Scripture. And it explains all of this, and it has all along. So let's see what it says. Jubilees 23, starting in verse 9. For the days of the forefathers of their life were 19 jubilees. For quick math, 19 times 49 is 931 years. Yes, it's actually 49 in Jubilees. That's how it's counting, if you figure that out. Uh, Though the 50th year is the celebration, that doesn't change that. But when it says Jubilees, it's talking 49s. It's sevens and 49s. And after the flood, they began to grow less than 19 Jubilees. True that. And to decrease in Jubilees. See, they decreased. And to grow old quickly. So they grow older more quickly. See, look at what that's saying there. Understand that when Adam was 930 years old, he probably looked like and he probably acted like someone who is 70, 80, 90, 100 years old today. See, we're growing old more quickly now. And to be full of their days by reason, of manifold tribulation and the wickedness of their ways, with the exception of Abraham. So, why do we live shorter as mankind? Manifold tribulation and the wickedness of our ways. Wow. Now, is that talking about Abraham? No. And he lived longer, but he still lived much shorter than the patriarchs of old. Why? Well, it's telling you that the wickedness of their ways, of the world, is wearing on mankind. This has impact on all of us. For Abraham was perfect in all his deeds with Yahuwah. Wow! What an awesome thing to say about someone. And well-pleasing in righteousness all the days of his life. And behold, he did not complete four jubilees in his life. Indeed, he did not. When he had grown old, by reason, listen to this now, get this, by reason of the wickedness and was full of his days. But wait, it just told us that Abraham was not wicked. He was righteous, right? In all of his ways, all of his days. So what made him grow old? Not his own wickedness. Think it through. This means the wickedness of the world takes a toll even on the righteous. Wow. And all the generations which will arise from this time until the day of the great judgment. Now, this is after the flood. We know what judgment that is. It's the second judgment with fire. Jubilees knows this and mentions it several times, in fact. So does the book of Enoch. Will grow old quickly before they complete two jubilees. Now, that's less than 98 years even. And our lifespans are considerably less on average indeed. But it'll address that here too. And their knowledge will forsake them by reason of their old age. And all their knowledge will vanish away. Did Moses just describe Alzheimer's, dementia, and the like? Well, perhaps, but 
even those who do not suffer from those diseases many times still lose their faculties in other ways at the end of life and we lose much knowledge regardless it is a sad state but remember this is what happens when the world as a whole chooses to turn their backs on its creator it takes a toll on us all And in those days, if a man live a jubilee and a half of years, all right, we'll go there, they will say regarding him, he hath lived long, and the greater part of his days are pain and sorrow and tribulation, and there is no peace. Oh my, guys, that's 73.5 years old, 73 and a half, and we are right there today very close to our average lifespan. This is over 2,000 years ago. We attest that it really is from the days of Moses. Moses knew that by our age, we would be facing this exact scenario. Imagine that. For calamity followeth on calamity, and wound on wound, and tribulation on tribulation, and evil tidings on evil tidings, and illness on illness. Now let's not forget, even the New Testament really tells us this same kind of thing when it says, Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap also. That's what this is, really. And all evil judgments such as these one with another, being judged by evil standards, yep, illness, yep, an overthrow, conquest, I think I've heard of that, and snow and frost and ice, some weird weather anomalies, in fact, in these, this age, uh, though we still have four seasons, just as Yahuwah promised we would, and fever, Ugh, go to the store recently, get your temperature taken, yeah, and chills, and torpor, and famine, and death, and sword, and captivity, and all kinds of calamities, and pain. Oh, it sounds awful, but that's the world in which we live. These are not Yahuwah's ways. We've rejected His ways. We're far from it, even in the church today. And they, again, have an impact on the entire world, not even just those directly affected, but sowing and reaping, my friends, as mankind. And all these will come on an evil generation, that's us generally today, which transgresses on the earth. Their works are uncleanness and fornication, watch TV recently, and pollution and abominations everywhere today, reaching epic levels of the pre-flood world even. Then they will say, the days of the forefathers were many even, unto a thousand years, and were good. But behold, the days of our life, if a man hath lived many, are threescore years and ten. That's 70 years. It's about our average lifespan, predicted thousands of years ago and still accurate. This is prophecy, folks. And if he is strong, fourscore years, that's 80 years old, and exactly our era, and exactly how we think today, it fits. And those evil, and there is no peace in the days of this evil generation. Wow, no peace. It doesn't mean you can't have peace. So many are seeking peace right now, especially with all of the bad news we've been hearing. If you want peace, keep his Sabbath. That is his mechanism, according to Scripture, for peace. Research that. And there you go. Yahuwah meant literally. Our lifespans would be reduced due to the wickedness of the world. 120 years is that limit, and it was 
progressive. It didn't all happen at one time. He didn't say it was all going to happen at one time. It's a false paradigm being applied by some scholars. If you look at the chronology, in fact, 120 years wouldn't even fit the time that Noah built the ark to the period of the flood exactly anywhere. But no matter, because Jubilees has always settled this, and there really is no debate. We even learn from Jubilees that our lifespans would be further shortened to less than 98 years, and essentially the average about 70, with one living 80 being heralded for their longevity, and we are right there now. This is, in fact, prophecy, which has come true and further proves that the book of Jubilees is accurate scripture and Torah even, and most certainly inspired. Thank you for watching another Answers in Jubilees. Yah bless to all. The Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, named by the temple priests in Qumran as the source of the exact determination of how to keep Torah's calendar in the Damascus document. Yes, they called it Torah and used it as such. This book renders the very first map of the world, the most ancient geography in all of history. Jubilees also known as the Book of Division, as Noah partitions the entire earth to his three sons, finds the Garden of Eden in the Philippines, pinpoints the seat of Gog of Magog's power, demonstrates continental divides originate with Noah and much more. It is the second witness to Genesis and Torah and concurs. It tests as Torah and we encourage you to review this full test for yourself in the beginning of this book. It was the priests who were exiled from the temple who lived in Qumran, known in Bible times as Bethabara, where Messiah was baptized and John the Baptist of temple priestly caste lived and operated. As these were his fellow Levite priests exiled from the temple, who continued to keep scripture there, as well as operate a function, compound, modeled in part after the temple. This is the only historic library of precedence for the Old Testament canon in ancient history, yet explained away in willing ignorance, just as 2 Peter 3 warned. Based on the R.H. Charles translation from the Ethiopic, this book will enlighten and its revelation will rock your world. As all 50 chapters appear in this book with curated and edited margin notes, in large print Bible format, easy to read. This 288-page quality paperback has a high-resolution section of maps that represent the world's oldest map by Noah. Read it and test it for yourself, and you will likely find, as we have, this book is inspired, even canon, in history. Available free worldwide in ebook, or purchase a print copy today on Shopee Philippines or Amazon internationally. Just go to bookofjubilees.org and the links are there for your area. We also offer bundle pricing with our other books in the Philippines. Our books are already expanding now, being read in 52 countries and more than half of the provinces in the Philippines. Join thousands who are finding this useful in their lives.